Okay, and we're back. Question 21 says evaluate 7 to the log base 7 of 34. I won't give you a question like this. Not on the, unless it's a true false question. <laughs> this is just too easy. Because what does this mean? The exponential of a logarithm, and they have the same base. It literally means this. Because the inverse of a logarithm is an exponential, and the inverse of a, an exponential is a logarithm. So when you compose a logarithm in an exponential, when the bases are the same, you just get the input out. And that's what we have here. All right, this, this logarithm literally means what is the power of 7 that gives you 34? This is literally the power of 7 that gives you 34. That's what that means. So when you plug the power of 7 that gives you 34 into the power of 7, you get 34. It's literally by definition. So this one's too easy. It's just 34. Uh, so that's why there's no space given here. <laughs> OK, so I'm going to erase that and then scroll down. 22, use the laws of logarithms to rewrite this as a single logarithm. OK. So we're going to be working with uh, the laws of logarithms, which have us bringing powers up that have us multiplying because of additions and dividing because of subtraction signs. And we're going to rewrite this just as one big logarithm. So here we go. I'm going to start with the powers. So there's this nice power that says the log of something times a number, or any variable really, is the same as the log of that something raised to that power. So this is just log of y squared. And this is log of z cubed. So log of x plus log of y squared minus log of z cubed. And at this point, yes, you could do it like this if you wanted to. That's fine. So I'll do it that way. We can do it that way if you want. Would not matter. And then I'll do it the other way as well. there we have it. So it's either one of these. You can either bring up the negative sign with a 3, or you can keep the negative sign there and just bring up the positive 3. Either way, it totally works. So now what we're going to use is we're going to use this property of logarithms, which says if you have a sum of logarithms, that can be rewritten as a product inside a logarithm. Okay. So I'll group those first two together. And we're just going to say the sum of logarithms is equal to the logarithm of a product. And then I'll do the same thing here with these two. This is x times y squared times z to the negative third. And that's, you know, there's a negative exponent in there. There's nothing in here about saying you can't have negative exponents, so this is totally fine. But what this would mean would be over here. So this is log of x times y squared minus log of z cubed. There's a property of logarithms which says if you have a difference of logarithms, that is equal to the logarithm of the quotient of the arguments. And here you see what this argument is the same as. Right? These, these two arguments are exactly the same. You can take that negative ex exponent, exponent there and bring it into the denominator like so. So these are exactly the same. These are equivalent expressions. And there's no discussion in the instructions about not having negative exponents. So they're both acceptable. Okay. Uh, 23. If log base b 
of x is y, then which of the following is true? This just is a question of uh, the definition of the logarithm. right? So we have this. The logarithm here means, literally, what is the power of b that gives you x? That's what this means. And we call that power y. So that, in other words, says that b to the y equals x. The logarithm means what is the power of this base that gives you this. That's what you call this whole logarithm. The power of its base that gives you the argument. So in other words, the base to that power is the argument. Okay, That was the first thing I, I did up in question I don't know, 21, I think. So that's it for this video. I'll be back for another one uh, to finish out more of these questions.